Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a mix of r slash entitled people, r slash revenge and r slash co-workers from hell. If you are new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe to join our awesome community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Coworker gets kidnapped by a Karen at work. I've been reading through these for a while and another story I read made me think of this. I will try to keep it short. A little background, I used to work at a large used car company with some locations having service stations. My location had a service station for our customers who bought cars from us and had any issues or just wanted to do regular servicing. Our service department was only open from 7am to 4pm on weekdays, not very easy to work around if you work normal 8-5 to five work weeks, I completely understand. I used to work the weekend shifts slash night shifts at this company in their business office, paperwork for sales, while I was going to college. Now onto the story, the characters for this story are me, my coworker Jay and the entitled woman EW. This happened around 6 pm on a Saturday night. Every Friday before the service station closed for the weekend, the manager would bring over a bin with all the weekend pickups so any customers who couldn't make it during the weird work week hours had the opportunity to still pick up slash pay for it in the main office. We had a woman come in, EW, already in a frenzy because she had just bought the car and was upset she had to already get it serviced. We had a 30 day window where all issues with the car would be fixed for free and the customer given a free rental in the meantime, so she didn't have to pay for the repairs but I do understand the frustration of having to go through the trouble of having to bring the car in and pick it up. I was going through the process of grabbing her keys and having her sign the sign out form for her car, but she refused to sign it without test driving the vehicle first. Now at nights we only have three people in the office. Our manager was gone talking to the sales manager for the evening and I had been working there for almost two years. So I told Jay I could handle the office alone and asked her to take EW out to her car so she could check it and see if it was running okay. I told Jay just to have her turn it on, if she had any issues I would just reissue her the rental and have the service techs take a look when they came in Monday. Jay grabs the EW's keys and paperwork and tells her to follow her to the service lot. Now 45 minutes have passed, my manager is back in the office and we are getting busy and I'm the only one able to leave to assist any customers or sales associates with paperwork, so I tell my manager that I'm going to run out and check on Jay and EW to see if I can speed up the process and get Jay back in the office to help with the rush. I go out to the service lot, no Jay, no EW and no EW car. I start to panic a bit because I know Jay does not have her phone, we have to leave them locked in our cabinets because we handle people's bank and personal info, so I cannot tell her to see where her and EW went. Another 10 minutes pass and Jay comes running back into the office sweating. I ask her where the hell she went because the whole process should have only taken about 15 minutes maximum. Here is what EW did. Jay took EW out to her car and the check engine light was no longer on and it was not making any noises while idling. I guess this did not satisfy EW enough and she refused to do anything until she could test drive it. It's part of our service tech's jobs to test drive the car before checking it as completed for this very reason. No, EW is not technically allowed to do that because she refused to sign out the vehicle and it would be liable to us if anything happened while still under our care. Jay tried to explain this to EW but she refused to listen. Jay was new and was a little scared of EW because she was being quite belligerent, so when EW said all she needed was a ride around the lot, she said okay and handed her the keys. She then told Jay that she had to go with her as a witness to the noise the car would make. Jay did not know how to refuse, I understand it's a weird situation to be in as a new employee having a customer screaming in your face telling you you have to do this, so she gets in the car with EW and EW then takes off. She leaves the parking lot, starts going on back roads and then gets on the interstate for a 35 minute joyride with my coworker. 
Jade did not know if she was getting kidnapped because she kept telling EW to pull over and go back, but she just told her to wait because the noise would happen. After EW finally came back to the store, Jay just ran straight from the car to the office to tell the manager and of course she is crying and shaking. My manager immediately goes outside and rips the woman a new one and told her to get out or she would be getting the cops called on her. She was blacklisted from our store, but I did get in trouble for having such a new co-worker handle that situation. I already feel like crap about it man, but in the end Jay was not kidnapped, just under the forced supervision of a very entitled Karen. And guys to me, forced supervision by a Karen sounds a lot like kidnapping. I personally would not want to, under any circumstances, spend more than even 5 seconds in one car with an entitled Karen. Honestly, talk about a traumatic experience for a new co-worker. I really hope the co-worker recovered from this. Either way, if you enjoy the stories about co-workers and crazy customers, then please feel free to post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one is titled Insane Coworker Revenge. I'm gonna be honest, there are no saints in this story, there is no good guy or bad guy, I felt I was wronged and I got revenge. That said, let me give you all some backstory and get to the good stuff we are all here for. And by the way guys, I gotta agree with that introduction, a tiny bit of a trigger of warning for what is about to happen in this story, indeed OP is really not a saint and might even be considered a douchebag in terms of what he is doing in this story, but that is up to your interpretation. Anyway, I worked as a security guard for a few years at a factory, during my last year I had become the site supervisor and ran the guard booth. We were contractors, our contract was simple. Make sure everyone who comes in is locked, watch the cameras, call bigwigs to pick up their visitors, every now and then we did a walkthrough or some paperwork. Quite simple and it leaves you with a lot of relative downtime depending on your shift. During my tenure I made a few friends, a few enemies and got along with most of the people working there. It is surprisingly easy to investigate incidents when people like talking with you. One of the enemies I made was a supervisor, let's call him Ted. Ted had worked his way up from a line worker and felt that since he had made his way from nothing, he deserved his ego. He had squared himself firmly against anyone he couldn't control and I never gave him his due. We all know his type. Now Ted treated his line workers pretty poorly and more than a few came to me to report his misconduct. One of our duties was to lock any of these complaints as an incident report, submit a copy to the factory admin, submit a copy to our company and then file the original. Ted had his own folder in that drawer, Ted did not like this, Ted did not like me. At the start of the pandemic we lost most of our staff in the booth. We were down to three guards trying to cover a 24-7 schedule. We did a lot of 12-hour shifts starting from March going all the way to October when I left. My company struggled to fill the missing spots, hiring two guards during that period. Neither lasted more than two weeks, October came, I was burned. Then both my remaining guards quit. I don't blame them in the least, I immediately turned in my two weeks and refused to work more than 12 hours a day. After I turned in my notice my company scrambled to replace me and the missing guards. They got my replacement at the start of my last week and she started on a Sunday. I trained her for one day and she never came back. I discovered on my last day she had claimed that I intimidated her and made her uncomfortable. She told my boss she didn't feel safe around me. Now I was livid at this. I have never mixed business and pleasure, I'm a big guy, I work out, I have never had those intentions at work. It was a major joke anywhere I've worked because my tagline has always been I don't poop where I eat. I was burnt out. I had an amazing woman I am now dating who was coming out to see me in two weeks. I had spent hours training this woman for nothing. I had her scheduled during my shift for the entire week so I could walk her through everything to do with the job. I had squared off with the factory admin, to keep it that way I was doing everything I could to help her because she was coming into a major mess. 
The admin was looking for a different contractor, supervisors were trying to access our files. We had a crap ton of sensitive information that would have let anybody move up the ladder quick, or at the least remove a lot of competition. It was chaos. At this point I had not had a day off or a good night's sleep in three months, and the boss I had only ever talked to over the phone had arrived in person to tell me this BS. I had almost been terminated over this on my last damn week. If I didn't have the work ethic my father taught me, I would have walked then and there. I finished my day and walked away never intending to think of that job again. Now the story should end here, but it didn't and this is the juicy part you all are hankering for. See, after I left a few friends kept me up to date on the going ons. My replacement came back for a day and then quit, citing the long hours would keep her away from her kit. I was salty, but it is not my problem until a few days ago. See, Ted had found out about her allegations and began spreading rumors that I had been terminated for sexual harassment. He then told people that I was a serial harasser and had caused a former female employee to quit as well. She had left as I had gotten the site supervisor job over her, I had seniority and she had a dirty disciplinary record. She had a few incidents that had nearly gotten her fired. I did not like this, especially given that two thirds of the incident reports on Ted were for sexual harassment. What Ted did not know is that I don't like being screwed with. While I am quiet and unassuming, I had plenty of time to build my MAD folders. Little personal history, when I was a computer tech I had been royally screwed over and nearly fired by my then boss. He gave me directives that were a violation of company policy, bad enough that when they came to light I was given an immediate final written warning. Since I had no proof he told me to do what I did, I shouldered full blame. Since that day I have created mutually assured destruction folders, MAD folders on anyone that I felt would try to screw me. Ted was one such person. All the originals of my folders are kept hidden in online storage and most are never touched. But Ted pissed me off and was threatening my future job prospects. Reputation is everything, so I opened his folder. I had access to the camera system at the factory, folks, small town factories are disgusting, people do crap you wouldn't believe, one really popular thing to do is screw around in the parking lot. Ted had built a little harem for himself by giving better line positions to women that gave him a little action. And I had pictures and video, I made a nice little folder with some choice clips and stills. Then I sent them to his wife. And that was not the end, I was not satisfied. This never would have been a thing if that replacement hadn't used me as an excuse to duck and run. I told you all, there's no saints here. During her one day of training, my replacement had asked me about cell phones with good cameras and a bunch of weird policy questions. A few careful questions and lo and behold, she has an OnlyFans. I warned her that was a huge violation of our contract with the company and any type of sex work is forbidden as the company has clients in Vegas and some European countries where that is legal and doesn't want any workers moonlighting. The company is incredibly strict on that, strict to the point that I could have terminated her on the spot. They are impartial, man or woman, it is not tolerated. Thinking on this and being very irate, I track it down and she was nice enough to have links to her premium snap. I bundle this and send it to three groups. My previous employer, the IRS and her ex, she had been in a protracted custody battle with him and our state is a little bit conservative. Judges here don't look favorably on sex workers, most have a prejudice that the women are hooked on drugs and will harm the child. And I just gave her ex evidence of sex work and possible tax fraud. If his lawyer cannot get a least split custody no child support that on the ex for being a piece of crap. So that is my story, let me know if you all feel this is pro revenge or not because honestly I'm not sure if I went far enough. And guys I would almost say that OP went a little bit too far but I'm curious what do you think about this story. Do you think that OP went too far or was it just right? Let us know in the comments. And the last one is titled HR tried to get rid of my dad right before he was able to get his pension. 
My father worked for a Forbes 500 company since the 70s. He moved up the ranks as a software engineer and management has patents for the company that saved it millions of dollars. He is almost to pension age and suddenly HR starts making his life miserable. He noticed this trend was happening to some of his co-workers when they were getting close to age 60 as well. HR lady calls him into the office and says that he was not punching in and out at the correct time. My father, an engineer, is very very detail oriented. He knew that these were false accusations and asked HR to prove it. They came back a week later and could not prove it. And he said, of course you cannot. I've been driving the corporate carpool bus from a major city 40 miles away from the company for the last 15 years. I always have 16 witnesses on my clock and time and I have not been late in 15 years. HR lady came back a week later and they said that they were going to fire him for letting people into the building without badging. He asked to see when and where he was letting someone into the building without badging. They showed that he held the door for his best friend who had also been working there since the 70s who had his foot cut off after having type 2 diabetes, he was in a wheelchair. Prior to this my dad took the chief of security out for lunch and told him about how this company wanted him to leave before he got his pension so he got some footage of his own. My dad said, that is very interesting. You are going to fire me for holding the door for my best friend of 35 years after his foot was amputated and he was in a wheelchair? Fine then, I hope you fire the CEO and yourself as well. He then proceeded to show footage of the HR lady holding the door for his friend and the CEO holding the door for his friend. My father ended up staying there until he got his pension. Added, I don't know his finances and he probably wouldn't have lost a whole pension, but there was a definite financial difference from being fired prior to reaching age 60 and making it to age 60. Edit number two, so this blew up so much that my brother who didn't know I was on Reddit texted me and said, you are Reddit famous, that's a story about dad, I knew this was you. Also some of you are wondering why a software engineer would have to clock in and out, well he didn't. I meant to use the word badge in and out of the building, they went that far to talk with security to see his badge timestamps. There are more things that led to this getting bad and I didn't want to write pages and pages, but it definitely escalated to this point. Lastly, for those of you that have been saying that my dad must have worked there as a child, this whole thing happened roughly 9 years ago, my father is 68 right now, if you want to know what company it was, this sentence is the most general hint I can give you, but it may drive people from that company to be mad at me. Final update, dad quit that job a while ago and made his own company in his retirement. He has used his own money to patent a new invention that desalinates seawater and provides clean solar energy. He has patents for this in America, India and China and is looking for some capital to provide clean water and power to third world countries. And sadly ripe stars we have already reached the end of the video, however as usual if you cannot get enough of my videos I would suggest you to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will show up very soon on the left side of the screen. In addition please don't forget to check out my patreon at patreon.com slash ripe youtube for more exclusive reddit content, mainly at least at the moment just no mother in law videos. In addition guys I would just like to say we are super super close to 50,000 subscribers so I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. It would be a dream come true to finally reach 50k. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.